we're going to be making is the DLT 19X. Ha, ha, ha. As you can see, this is a pretty massive gun. Uh, this is what I use when I'm trooping in my Death Trooper, and everyone loves it. It's nice, it's well built, it can take a troop, and it's awesome. So we're going to basically be going over how to build this guy. Now I'm going to build it in sections, and then at the end we'll take those sections and put them together. So what we're going to start with tonight is the receiver. So here on the counter I have all the receiver parts laid out. And the uh, reason I have gloves on right now is I just need to super glue a couple pieces together. And I like to have those on because I like to use an uh, accelerator for my super glue so I don't have to wait as long. So we'll get those glued, then we'll be able to just continue on. Uh, the main pieces we have to glue together are the two top parts of the top of the receiver and the receiver itself. Right here. Now this gun's going to utilize a half inch PVC pipe going down the entire length. That gives it a lot of rigidity, makes it really friendly when you're trooping, things like that. And I'm also going to use a little piece of it right now to make sure I line everything up well. Because basically we want this to go through the bottom of the receiver. Like that. And if you look on the bottom, you want to make sure those screw holes are all together on the bottom because that's where the uh, trigger is going to assemble. So I can use that PVC pipe to make sure I keep them nice and aligned as I'm super gluing them together. Uh, depending on the weather and how hot it is, things like that, the super glue can set very quickly. So I want to make sure that I can get this open. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glue on here, slide it down the pipe, make sure they're lined up correctly, uh, make sure there's no wiggle or anything like that, and then I'm going to hit it with this a couple times to make sure that it sets really well. This is awesome stuff that makes your uh, super glue set instantly. So I'm going to go ahead, and I've shaken this well, so I'm just put some on my receiver right here, make sure that I'm lining up so that the two bolt areas will be next to each other. And then dunk. Now it's kind of cold in my garage, so I get a little bit of leeway in setting time here. I'm also going to use tissue just to wipe off some of this excess. That way I don't have to sand it off later. And some of my glove goes with it. <laughs> See, I'm just making sure that those guys stay lined up. Press down nice. And then I'll hit it with this. And now that guy is dry. Bam! Just like that. Took a little of my glove with it, but I can get that off. Now we're going to do the same thing with the receiver, at the top of the receiver. Now this is basically going to sit in here, roughly like that. Yeah, like that. So I can kind of use that same methodology to make sure it's lined up. You can see that there's some grooves in here. So I take this guy, and the main reason I wanted to pull it out is to make sure it didn't get glued in there as well. I'm just going to set this down like that. And see how that's going to sit on there nice. And that's going to sit on there. And that will keep it nice and lined up. So I'm going to do the same thing. Take a little super glue. Dun, 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 dun. Remember, you must make sound effects while you work. You go nuts. I dun, dun, dun. I'm just going to kind of use this to line it up for me.
and take. Try that one more time. My spray didn't get on the inside there. You can use that to line it up nice. Make sure everything still feels like it's aligned. I'm basically just trying to make sure everything feels like it's flush. set for just a second let that soak in stay stay good boy and then I can get these guys off so that's pretty much it for the gluing for right now so as you can see this is nice and solid now and this is basically going to be the base for most of the gun so now we can go ahead and while that's setting for a couple seconds, I'm going to go ahead and start assembling some of the other parts so we can come back to the main receiver. So the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to grab the receiver here and the receiver has some grips to go with it. Grip one and grip two. And these actually screw on. So that's just going to land there like that. And then for the four on this side and the two bottom ones on this side, you're going to want to use M4 by 10 screws. And I happen to have some right here, coincidentally. And let me get a screwdriver. There we go. Now, another cool trick when you are assembling 3D printed props that use screws. Uh, you can glue them on as well. Sometimes I'll put a couple drops of glue in here. Use that to hold it on as well. But normally you don't have to if you're using screws. But a cool trick is butane torch. If you heat up the screws a little bit, they'll actually melt the plastic as you put it in. And that'll really make it a mechanical lock because it's actually going to, when it's that plastic cools, it's going to cool all the way around that screw. So I'm just going to go ahead and start with this guy. You don't have to heat it up much. Just give it a little bit of heat so it'll melt a little bit of that plastic. I'm going to go ahead and start screwing this guy in. Now for this bigger area up top, you're going to want to use uh, M4x20s because you have all that extra length there. And I had my M4x20s, that's 12, 12, 12. I need an M4x20. M4 by 20. Take a couple of these guys and just do the same process. Now you don't have to do this by any means. Like I said, it just helps to give it a real mechanical bond once that plastic melts around it. And 
that's really going to lock that in there. I'm going to go ahead and put the other side on first before I tighten everything. Again, same process. Now, a reminder, once you heat it up, don't touch it. Not that I would ever do anything like that. Okay, so I went ahead and finished off putting in the four screws. So basically that's the uh, handles attached to the trigger. Now we can move on to some of the other parts. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start putting on some of the side pieces onto the top of the receiver here. Now basically, I'm going to have this guy go on the side like that. And for this, we're going to use two five millimeter screws by 16. And these I like to get with the flat heads because it's going to be sitting flush there and also with the same ones we're going to be using to attach the trigger to the main receiver and that's where that barrel is going to be sitting. So I'm still going to do the same principle. This has itty bitty. There we go. Heat it up, and then basically you're going to go through the side right here, and then that's going to go into the two holes on this guy. The other one, And like I was saying, between the PVC pipe running down the length of this gun and the screws holding everything together, this turns into one solid prop. <clears throat> Next up, I'm going to take the cover for the other side. And this basically just goes on this side over here. And for this one, I need some M4s. Keeping all these screws straight. <laughs> Good thing there's a rewind, huh? So I'm just going to take this. Give it a little heat. And this is going to go into those screw holes on the side there. Grab one more. Plus, I like to think having some real screws gives it a little bit more realism than just having little plastic 3D printed screw nubs. A 
There we go. So you can see how we get the two sides of the top of the receiver. And basically this is going to fit on here just like this. Now what's cool about this is you'll actually be able to open and close the top of the receiver. Um, this little part here. That just gets slid in the top here. And what that is, is when you click all this together, you're going to use a big boy, the um, is this M5, yeah, M5 by either 80 or 90. And this is actually going to slide through and then it screws into the back half to keep this aligned so that this will raise and lower once it's all the way in. So that whole thing will fit in there and be able to open and close. So that's the um, main part of the receiver. Now we can move on to the back of it. So on the back, we're going to have this back plate. And this is basically going to fit over the holes that are already there. And for this one, I'm going to use a little bit of glue again. It's basically going to fit right over those existing holes. Like that. And then for this one, you do have a big... Uh, 3D printed plastic screw and it just goes right down the middle there to kind of lock these guys together. So that's just going to go right on down through in there. There's a little bit of plastic stuck down there. goes so you're basically gonna have that big screw down there on the bottom and then a couple of the little baby screws that come with this guy it's gonna be hard to see those just get glued right on top there to cover up those back holes And yes, I use a lot of super glue. I have no fingerprints left. So basically, I end up with something like that on the back. Line those up a little bit. So that's kind of the main part of the receiver. Then we can go on to the back here. And that's where this part's going to go on. And this is just a little bit of a spacer between the receiver and the back butt of the gun. So again, a little bit of super glue. Do, 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 do. Make sure that the nubby lines up with the nub and the squares line up. So this just snaps in there like that. And you see how that all lines up? Oops, you can't see it on that one. See how that all lines up there? Because this part, our racha here, is going to fit in there to lock everything together. Right like that. So a couple more drops. And 
and that guy's just gonna sit right in there and that's gonna help keep all those parts nice and locked together tight now on to the side here we have this really long strip now that's where the charging handle is going to attach and that basically just sits right down in here now the trick here is it looks like it's off you see there how you can kind of slide it around it sits in that groove and you'd think it would fit kind of like that but you actually want to push it all the way until it locks and as far out as it can go and see how that overlaps a little bit that's correct because that's going to help lock in the front of the receiver once we get to that part so you want to make sure it's pushed all the way forward so it actually overlaps a little bit like that so i'm going to go ahead and add some glue here and actually i'm going to put it on the other part so i don't over glue I'm just going to push that on in there, make sure it's all the way forward. And you can see how that kind of overhangs just a little bit like that. That's the correct way to glue this in. And I had a little bit of excess glue there. I always like to kind of wipe off any extra glue as I'm going that I notice. That we don't have to sand any down later. So that goes right like that. Now next up we have the trigger here. Now the way the trigger goes for this guy is it actually has a dual trigger. So this little part slides into the main part. Gives you a cool little dual trigger there. Now, um, when I make these as a pre-assembled kit, I don't glue in any of the triggers or anything like that because some people like to add electronics and that way it gives them the option. Um, the nice thing about this is, like I said, you can open this up even after it's done. So if you do want to add electronics, you can always do it next to the barrel in here. That's what I do with mine. I'll show you mine here in a minute. I have LED lights I put in the two big front lights and I ran the wires down through here and I have a trigger to turn the light the lights on and off down on my trigger here. So I always like to give the option to be able to add electronics if you like. <clears throat> now next up we're going to attach the trigger to the receiver. Now basically this slides in the bottom here and the best way I found to do it to make sure it fits in there nice is do the front first. And you can see where it kind of lines up there. And then give it a good push on the back to pop it in there. So that's going to pop it in there nice and tight. And then two more 5 mil screws. Screw has a messed up head. Let me get a smaller Phillips. Hmm, I got a effective five mil. But I can come back and add that in later. But that's basically how you're gonna add in the stop or the and that's still loose. Let me tighten this up a little bit more. 
Now be careful, you don't want to over tighten it because it is going into plastic. So there you have the bottom of the receiver. Now the trigger just drops right down the middle. Dunk. And then on the right hand side is your safety switch. Now it just glues in like that, but it also locks in your trigger. So, if you want to do electronics, anything like that, make sure you do that before you put this in. Because if you look on the actual trigger itself, you can see that little notch right there. And this actually fits into that notch and locks that trigger into the rest of the gun. Now, don't glue it. You can pop it right back out. No problem. So that's the trigger. And then we have this cool little disc disc basically is a greeble that goes on right there so I'll put a couple drops on this guy glue him into place cool little greebly bit Right like that. And then we got a couple more little plastic screws, screw heads. They're basically just fillers for this hole back here. See how that just goes right on there? Another one for the other side. And I just got super glue all over my fingers. So that's going to go like that. Then you're gonna find two little bitty guys in your bag of oh goodies that are basically just little circles. Those are spacers for your long bolt. For both sides of this middle part here. And finally, we have two more pieces. We have the charging handle. This basically gets glued on right here, and it snaps right in there. Now, uh, when I make the um, pre-assembled kits, I don't glue these on, just because they have a tendency in shipping to break off. But you can see there's a little snap right there, there's a little groove that fits in right there. It goes right there. And the final part is this guy here, which is the bottom plate that goes right here. Now again, this part I don't glue in. It, go, it comes with the kit, but it, I don't glue it in in case you want to do anything with electronics, anything like that. It gives you more room to fit things in. So once you are done, and I'll go ahead and put the trigger in here just so we can see it. Drop the trigger on in there, and I dropped the little baby trigger. Then I'll put this guy in there. Put the top on. And that right there is the receiver assembly. assembly. That wasn't so bad now was it next up we'll be making the front of the receiver and the rest of the barrel and that's it for this one
Hope you enjoyed it.